Oh, here we go again. Get it? Okay. The Tortured Poets Department by Taylor Swift picks my reads for the week. Song number one, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. My new anthem, apparently. I chose One In Rome by Sarah Adams. Pop star with a broken heart, finding love in a small town romance. Song number two, Fortnite with Posty. I love him. I love you, it's ruining my life. I touched you for only a fortnight. Epic lyrics, y'all. I Thought of Addicted To You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. Lastly, Down Back. If I can't have him, I might just die. It would make no difference. 100% made me think of the romance in Tell Me Lies by Corolla Lovering. Does it work? We'll see. Okay, let's read. So good. I don't know what my life would be without coffee. Let me tell you what's going on. Cause your girl is struggling a little bit. I had this video idea and I'm executing it. But I think I'm in my first ever reading slump. I'm struggling to read. Like I cannot for the life of me get myself to read. Well, I started one in Rome last night, finally. Like I got myself to like sit down and read, but I only read like 30 pages. What am I saying? I don't know if it's the book or if it's me, but I can't get into it. So today is Sunday. I have time to read. Now to be fair, the past two days, I did not have that much time to read. Like I didn't, but I had my night. Thursday night I got in bed and I was like, I'm gonna start one in Rome. I opened it up, I read one sentence and I closed the book and I was like, I can't do it. And then Friday, I didn't have time to read all day, but Friday night I got into bed and I was like, it's pretty late, but I think I can get an hour in reading. Sat down and I read like two pages and I was like, I'm not feeling this and I closed the book. And then last night, Saturday night, to be fair, I got into bed at like 11.30 p.m. and I was like, let me just at least get a taste of this book, okay? Let me just like force myself to read, maybe get to page 25, I got to page 30. Let me tell y'all, it was not an enjoyable experience. I was like, forcing myself to read the book. I was not vibing, I was not enjoying it. I could only get myself to get to page 30. That wasn't even for the sake of like time or the fact that I was tired, it was just because I wasn't into the book. I don't know if it's the fact that I'm just not feeling cheesy romance right now, like that's just not what I want and that's what Sarah Adams is giving me because the book feels like a Hallmark movie. Or if it's that I'm in my first ever reading slump. I've never been in a reading slump before because I would say I'm like newish to this reading journey, to being a book girly, to being a part of this community. So I would say I really got into reading last Last December and we're only in June. Anyways, I'm rambling and you probably don't even care, but I just wanted to update you guys because it's been a few days and I've only gotten to page 30 of One in Rome. I told myself I'm gonna like finish the book today. I'm gonna like sit down, force myself to read, and my goal is to finish the book. I just got off of reading a bunch of fantasy series and I think this might be Holly Black's fault. I was so into The Cruel Prince. So I just wanted to document that I'm in my first reading slump ever. Hopefully one of these books will get me out of it because I have this book and then two more books to read for this video. And if I'm honest, y'all, I'm not excited for any of them. The timing of this video couldn't be worse, but I've, I'm committed. I already started and I have to see it through. If I wasn't reading for a video, I would definitely just DNF one in Rome. Maybe pick it up back later. And this is the first Sarah Adams book I've ever read, so that kind of blows. Oh, I got to page 34, not 30. Okay, what this book is about, what I can tell you by being on page 34, but I think I pretty much got the plot. This book follows Amelia Rose. Her stage name is Ray Rose. She is a pop star, like she's in a rut. And I, we don't know like the specifics. I don't know if it was heartbreak. I don't know if it's just like her career. So she decides to escape and take a mini vacation to Rome, Kentucky, which apparently is like a couple hours out from where she lives. Now y'all, I was so excited to get the Rome, Europe, setting. So when I found out it was Rome, Kentucky, I was a little disappointed. So she is driving to Rome, Kentucky. That's how the, the book literally starts. And she's driving like one of her old cars that she's had since high school. Now, she's obviously loaded, so I don't know why she's not taking one of her nicer cars for a road trip. I don't know, I guess she just wants trouble. I guess it's, I, it's just for the sake of the plot, I know, but I just thought she was being so stupid because I just feel like that's so irresponsible. She does this, her engine is like rattling as she's driving. 
Anyway, so of course, what do you think is gonna happen? Her car breaks down and she literally like drives onto the MMC's property into his front yard. So she's like all like broken down on his grass in his front yard. And his name is Noah Walker. And Noah Walker is born and raised Rome, Kentucky in this little small town. He owns a pie shop that's called The Pie Shop. All we know from him is he's like anti-relationship because his fiance broke his heart and so now he's like, I'm done with women, you know what I mean? He's kind of a grump and he's okay, but then once he finds out that the woman who ruined his front yard is Ray Rose, a celebrity, he like, his whole demeanor changes and he just gets like so close off and he's just like done with her, like right when he figures out that she's Ray Rose. So this is obviously like sunshine meets grumpy, like grumpy meets sunshine. It's so weird because at first she's like so timid and he goes out to the car and he's like saying, you need to get out of your car because your engine smoking but it's from her point of view she's like I'm not getting out of my car because he might be a murderer and try to kill me she sees him in her headlights and she's like oh my gosh like he's so cute he's like Kentucky Ken he goes back into his house he calls this lady named Mabel who was his grandmother's best friend but is like his second grandma and he's like will you talk to this girl in my front yard because she won't get off my property and I need her to get out of her car because he cares so much, I don't know why. And will you vouch for me and prove to her that I'm not a murderer? Noah goes back out there. Here, take the phone. This woman's gonna vouch for me. Then all of a sudden, Amelia's like, oh my gosh, like he's not a murderer. So then she gets out of her car and then she stays at his house. <laughs> I was like, we just went from a zero to a 10 so fast. This whole beginning is already really silly to me, pretty much. Noah Walker, small town guy, owns a pie shop, says he doesn't have time for Amelia's celebrity problems. Amelia's like, I just need a break and I just wanna escape my celebrity problems. And so I'm sure they're gonna see a different side to each other, forced proximity. I guess she helps them make pies. I mean, the cover's adorable, don't get me wrong. I sound negative, I, I know I do, I hear myself. I just, and I'm worried, I, I wish I didn't have to read this book right now because I feel like I'm gonna be harder on it than I should. I've heard Sarah Adams gives off cheesy, like, extra cheddar cheesy. So I knew what I was getting into. I think I just thought I wanted that after reading all these high stakes fantasies. I'm just gonna try to finish this book and go into it more with an open mind and less negative. And I'm just hoping like these characters will grow on me. I forgot to say, this is a retelling, like a modern retelling of Audrey Hepburn's movie, Roman Holiday. Making progress, page 164. I don't know why I said it like that. What am I thinking? Well, I'm thinking this is so fluffy, but you know, I think that's just Sarah Adams. It's like interesting, I guess. I think I'm just reading this at the wrong time because I'm just kind of bored. I'm not really sucked in. I find myself just like reading to like finish it. Their first kiss just didn't make sense to me. It came out of nowhere and like not in a good way. Something like funny happened. So Amelia's our FMC. She's starting to figure out things about Noah, about his past. And she says, she's like, oh my gosh, I realize I don't know anything about this man. And I'm like, well, obviously you've only known him for a few days. He's practically still a stranger. What do you mean? Of course there's so much you don't know about this man. One, he's a closed book. And two, even if he wasn't, like you don't really know someone after a few days. I don't know. I say this, but like, I just thought it was funny. I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about this book. Sometimes when I'm reading it though, I feel like I don't feel their connection. But I finished When in Rome. I'm giving it a 3.5 star. Honestly, I wanted to give it a three star, but I honestly think I just read this at the wrong time. I don't think I wanted a cheesy romance. I thought I did. I thought I wanted one, but no, I don't think so. And this was just like really cheesy. There were moments, y'all, where I had to like set the book down and look the other way because it was 
borderline cringy. I don't know if that's just how Sarah Adams writes. This is my first Sarah Adams, so maybe this is her thing. I'm honestly unaware, but um, will I read another Sarah Adams? I think I'll give her one more shot and I think I'll make sure that I am ready and wanting like a very fluffy, cutesy, cheesy romance. I honestly didn't feel their connection that much because I found myself not really, like I was wanting it to be happily ever after, obviously, but I just wasn't really rooting for them hardcore. Like I just was kind of like, yeah, well, I know they're gonna end up together. So whatever happens, happens. So I don't know. I just wasn't super into it, I guess. I said earlier that I thought their first kiss was weird and y'all, I'm sticking by that. that. It was just, honestly, we could have skipped that and still had a great natural progression to their story. I don't know what Sarah Adams was thinking, but honestly, it wasn't needed and it was the timing was weird and it didn't make sense and honestly it didn't make sense with their characters especially the MMC I was like where did this come from what the heck I don't know it was just so weird and off-putting I wasn't really swooning I wasn't like really feeling anything so but I was just kind of along for the ride like I was like I had no idea where it was gonna go and I was interested to see and there was like a little bit of a twist which I enjoyed I thought that was I don't know I felt like a couple parts in their monologue it was very very repetitive I was like okay you've seen said this before, like we get it. Um, so yeah, it was okay. You just have to kind of take it for what it is, you know? And I knew it was gonna be cheesy, so that helped, right? And I didn't have super high expectations, so that also helped. Despite me being disappointed that it wasn't in Italy, I liked the small town of Kentucky, Rome. It kind of made up for it a little bit for me and um, small town's always just kind of fun. But yeah, this 100% felt like a Hallmark movie. Anyways, that's all I have to say on this. I started the book. Let's talk about the plot first before I go into my thoughts, of course. Okay, so I feel like the plot of this book is pretty simple and straightforward. So this book follows Lily and Lauren, or Lauren, but he goes by Lo. Lily is a sex addict and Lo is an alcoholic and they have known each other, I don't know the exact age, but since they were children, they grew up together. Both were born into wealthy families. Uh, Lily's family owns a like a soda company called Fizzle, I believe. And then Lo's family owns a baby product company. They both discovered each other's addictions. I wanna say in high school or middle school. They made a pact to hide each other's addictions from each other's families, they decided to fake date. For Lo, he's fake dating Lily so that his, mostly his dad will believe that he's getting his life in order and him dating the infamous Lily Calloway because their families are friends. It'll kind of like shape him up because his dad was threatening to send him to military school because he was flunking all his classes and his dad was discovering that Lo was drinking. And then Lily is fake dating Lo so that no one will discover that she is sleeping around with a bunch of guys because why would she be? She is has been committed to Lo for three years. Yeah, so they have been carrying on with this charade for three years. We follow them in the present, which is college. Um, and of course we get some flashbacks to get some better understanding of why they are the way that they are, you know, why they struggle with these addictions, why they made this pact, what their families are like. So yeah, that's the plot. Very simple and we're just following them. They both attend the same college. They live in an apartment together. My thoughts so far, it's okay. I don't know what it is, but books just aren't hitting for me right now. I'm not really eager to read. I think I'm just in a slump and no no book so far has taken me out of my slump. It took so much effort just to get to page 118. I don't know why. I feel like so far it's just been like world building and character building. Like nothing has really happened. Maybe more will happen in the second half. You know, I'm not even halfway through, so maybe I shouldn't speak so soon, but so far we're meeting all of Lily's sisters. I feel like the authors are introducing Lily's sisters because they have their own spinoff series. We're getting to know Lily and like what her lifestyle looks like with this addiction. And then same with Lo. Um, this is only from Lily's point of view, you know, so we're not getting a lot of insight into Lo and what his life looks like, but you get an idea, right? Because Lily and Lo are pretty much like always together. I feel like it has a lot of potential. Like this story has a lot of potential. These characters have a lot of potential. It's kind of giving off Gossip Girl vibes. I don't know why. I think because they're wealthy upbringing, you know, they're rich parents, um, their lavish lifestyle. And I hear that it gets better. Like you just have to maybe get through the first book. I don't know.
Y'all, I have 20 pages left of this book and I just have no idea how this is gonna end. Oh, also, update, I'm hooked. Yeah, I probably should have let y'all know. Like, I'm addicted now, I love these characters, I love this story. Like, I have to see where this goes. I'm totally gonna finish the series. I don't know how this is gonna end. I feel like we're still in the middle of a, of a story. That makes sense. A series is one story broken into parts. finished it i can already tell you not five stars but once this book picked up it kept my interest and this became like a whole world characters that i am now obsessed over i finished addicted to you as you saw last night i am settling on a solid four star which i'm shocked actually because i thought this was going to be just another overhyped romance and i was going to disagree. I'm obsessed with Gossip Girl. I rewatched that show over and over throughout high school. I couldn't get enough of it. I probably rewatched it at least eight times. I'm not kidding. Like I just, I would never get bored. I would never get sick of it. This kind of gives off Gossip Girl vibes if the main characters were struggling with addictions. This book does not glamorize addiction and the authors go over, they're honest about it. Even when they're not ready to come to grips that they do have an addiction, they know that they are struggling with something that does not make them happy and something that they wish they didn't deal with. So I do wanna make this clear that this is not five-star literature in the sense of the writing. You know, like this book is not deep really or profound. You know, I do honestly wish it was. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but I realized when I closed the book, I thought that there was a lot of potential for the authors to go even deeper and they didn't, which, you know, I think was a choice. And I think they were trying to keep this book a little bit lighter. I will say that this book, I think would have been better if we got Lowe's point of view. Lowe was the MMC. And and I think going forward, they should definitely add that. I haven't checked, you know, if they do, but if they don't, if the authors don't, I will be very disappointed because y'all, we need Lowe's point of view going forward. We need it. It's funny because I thought that when I finished the book and then I saw that there was a bonus chapter at the end. It was Lowe's point of view on one chapter and I was like, yes, this would have been so much better. Like to have Lily and Lowe's. One thing I will say about this book, I understand but i wasn't crazy about this book talks a lot about sex that is because lily is a sex addict so it makes sense but i feel like if we would have had lowe's point of view it wouldn't have felt like we were always talking about sex because it would have been split evenly one thing i will say is i'm sure you're all wondering the spice level because lily is a sex, sex addict they it's not descriptive they don't really go into lily's sex endeavors the authors just let you know that's happening without writing like 50 sex scenes oh my gosh this book would be 600 pages lily just kind of talks about how she thinks about it and what that looks like but it doesn't really go into actual sex scenes i will say like i think this whole book i said i think i said this earlier in my first impression but this whole book really is i think setting up the series as a whole even setting up the spin-off callaway sisters series that's what i think the purpose of this book is which i totally get because the author wanted to introduce all of these characters because so many characters come into this book introduce this world and i think they did a great job because i can already see where this series is going to go i think it has so much potential every time a new character came into this book it got better and better yeah i see the potential in this series and i will definitely be finishing this series because i already got attached to a lot of these characters i especially got attached to lo and lily the, the authors are really taking time to world build character build so the first half is a little slow and i think honestly honestly this is truly what i think if i wasn't in a reading slump the first 100 pages wouldn't have been that bad for me but yeah i had to push through so yeah i fell in love with this world because of these characters the author did a great job but i will say one you have to know what you're getting into this is a book about a bunch of spoiled rich kids with spoiled rich kid problems lo and lily's relationship is pretty toxic two these characters already do give off toxic vibes even the side characters yeah and the ending left me satisfied but wanting more yeah i just think it's gonna get better and better i think there's so much potential with this series
Hello. I was finally able to get in some serious reading time, which I'm glad because I feel like it's taking me a long time to finish this video. So I got to page 182 of the book, Tell Me Lies. I think I'm about halfway. I mean, it looks like I'm halfway. This book follows Lucy Albright and what is his name? Steven DeMarco. It is dual point of view. So we're getting both of their perspectives on this story. This novel is telling the, the story of their relationship. It's like, it's past and present timeline, but so far it's been mostly past with a few chapters going over the present. The present is Lucy is at one of her college best friend's wedding and anticipating seeing Steven. And I don't know how many years it's been since they've last seen each other. Their timeline is pretty messy. Mostly it's just been the past and it's been telling the story of how they met and then their backstory, their history, their relationship. Also just getting pieces of them and why they are the way that they are because this relationship is pretty toxic and dysfunctional. And so I guess the author's trying to give us the reasons as to why. It kicks off where Lucy is going to college. It's her first day at college at Baird. She's from New York and her family lives in New York, but Baird is in California. And she's so excited to be separated from her family. Like she claims she just needs space and that's what she's most excited for and you can already tell there is some discord in her relationship with her mother because she doesn't call her mother mom she calls her by her first name cj she goes to a party that first day catches the eye of steven demarco but they don't start talking until later on on some boat trip at some beach that's when we start getting steven's povs as well and then it starts alternating from there you get steven's point of view there's no sugar coating like oh my gosh y'all i hate him so much he's a narcissist he's a sociopath he is a walking red flag he's actually the worst and it's made clear like literally when he starts talking <laughs> when i started reading his pov chapter i was like i hate you you know because we're in his head and it sucks too because if if anyone's ever dated a Steven, I'm sure it's pretty like disgusting to read because you know this is how some guys think and it's just a little bit triggering. And then Lucy, it's just, it's hard because Lucy, she just, ever since what happened with her mother, because she didn't always call her mother by her first name, she actually would call her, you know, her mother mom, but one day changed everything and Lucy, the author doesn't let us know what that is. But you can't help but like feel for Lucy because you know that moment changed everything. and the lingering effects of what happened with her mother is the reason why she's with someone like Steven. And it's just, it's so hard to read because I like Lucy. I do. I mean, I feel like at some point, maybe we've all been a Lucy. Lucy just becomes so quickly attached to Steven. And it's just hard because Steven is just a douche. She starts to, I feel like, put her identity in this relationship with Steven. And so she just starts to shrink figuratively and literally. Like Lucy starts to have a serious eating disorder. And so that's hard to read. I don't know, she's like trying to fit into this perfect mold for Steven. And it's made clear too. And I know the author, like this is so intentional. The author's doing this intentionally because it's made clear. Like Lucy wasn't even like super into him in the beginning because she didn't think that he was that attractive because it's made clear that he's not. But this dude it's obviously made clear that the only reason he gets girls and he gets girls is because he knows how to charm them he knows how to flirt he knows how to like what to say that's going to flatter them and pull them in and he's persistent he goes after what he wants so he was always in lucy's face and then he he does his research like he'll like really take the time to google search these girls so he knows exactly what to talk to them about what to say and he's very very forward i just really can't stand him it's not like i'm triggered because i relate you know and i i see myself in lucy and i see myself in this relationship i'm triggered just because i know there's stevens out there and i know girls have dated stevens and probably messed them up a little bit you know what i mean and hurt them broke their heart and it's just like i'm triggered for those girls and so so I think I'm mostly I'm just triggered for Lucy like I just want to tell her to run I want to tell her she deserves better because I like Lucy I just hate Steven so much and I'm scared this isn't gonna be a happy ending that's literally what the plot is y'all it's just 
watching this super toxic relationship unfold and not even a toxic relationship with some redeeming qualities you know what i mean it's just straight up toxic like there's nothing good about this relationship all that to say i'm entertained i just want to see how it ends I, I have to know how this is gonna end like i'm sick i'm sick of steven i hate him so much he makes my stomach churn like i really don't like him but i'm so entertained and my eyes are glued to the pages i can't wait to just know how it ends and never think about this book again i have no idea what i'm gonna rate this book i think it's all gonna depend on how it ends hopefully i'll see you guys tonight and let you know i finished it and we'll see how i feel I don't know. I'm sort of speechless. Why did I kind of love that? I think I loved this. Mm, I'm feeling all sorts of things. I just finished working out and I need to talk about this book. Y'all, I finished this last night and it has stuck with me. I thought about it all throughout my workout. I thought about it all morning while I ate breakfast and drink my coffee. I went and like talked to my mom about it this morning. I woke up, I went out there and I was like, mom, you gotta hear about this book. I'm speechless. I'm flabbergasted. Four stars. This isn't what I thought it was gonna be at all. Honestly, based off of the blurb on the back, I feel like the author is kind of vague about what the book is about on purpose because at first glance, you almost think this is a romance. You almost think this is about a toxic relationship, but like a toxic relationship that you root for, you know, that has a happy ending, no. And honestly, y'all, I wanna share something because I'm so proud of myself. Earlier when I told you guys my first impressions, I was like, I think I mentioned, hopefully I did so that there's proof. I said this guy's a narcissist and a sociopath. So oh, I called it. I called it because Lily goes to therapy. She talks to the therapist about Steven and the therapist was like, he's so clearly a sociopath and a narcissist and a sadist. And I was like, how did I call that? Like, ha, I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Anyways, I thought that was funny because I was so proud of myself that I was able to correctly identify what this dude is. And um, yeah, Steven is haunting me. I, I was working out this morning and I was thinking about Steven. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's haunting me because all I can do is think about this crazy dude and how much he freaks me out. He's freaked me out and he freaked me out because, you know, there's a lot of people like Steven which is scary. And so honestly, I feel like if you've dated a guy like Steven, honestly, this might be a little bit triggering for you. Or it might be really therapeutic. I don't know. I mean, the dedication is to anyone who's dated a Steven. Kind of triggering. Gonna probably stick with me. I'm probably gonna think about this book for the rest of the week because I can't stop thinking about it. I'm so glad I read it though. I really am. And I'm so glad I went into it blindly. I looked it up, but it was classified as a romance and a thriller. I wouldn't classify it as romance. I, I don't wanna say much because I, I think you should really just read it and go into it not knowing anything because there's even like a mystery vibe to it as well. It's weirdly really good and entertaining. I wanted to throw the book and rip my hair out, but I couldn't stop turning the pages. I was so entertained. Not to get too serious, but I think like every young woman should read this book because I honestly think... <laughs> I will never forget this character, Steven. And seeing the way he thinks, you kind of get an idea of how narcissists and sociopaths like him think, like their brain process. Kind of scarring, kind of triggering, but it's good because you'll never forget it. I think it'll help you identify even the smallest signs. I just know this dude's gonna stick with me forever. Honestly, it was a little educational, not gonna lie. I don't know, and I love Lucy, I truly did. She was great at carrying the book on her part. Her POVs were great, and I felt she was very likable. I saw some people say that they did not like Lucy. I think liking Lucy helped me because it leveled out the creepy Steven POVs. I thought, I think we could all be a Lucy. I mean, she met Steven when she was 18, y'all. She was so vulnerable. And once you like learn about Steven and you like see how he thinks, he picks out women like they're prey. So he knows which ones are vulnerable and he knew Lucy was emotionally vulnerable. Yeah, it's not a romance. It's very entertaining, but I, I 
Honestly, y'all, I think this got me out of my slump and I will never forget this book. It was kind of scary, I'll be honest. And I think the cover is super cool and creative. That deserves some credit. I think this was her debut novel. I loved her writing. It was actually pretty profound and deep. I was annotating a lot of stuff in here, highlighting stuff that I wanted to keep with me. I'm like really impressed with this book. I really am. I, the more I think about it, the more time passes. I really love it. I can see myself bumping up my rating. I will say the only reason I kept it at four stars is because it started to drag by page 300 I was over it I was done with Steven I was tired of it I was just over everything and I can't go into that too much because that'll spoil Lucy and Steven's relationship but I was just sick of it it felt like we were going in circles it felt like it was a repeat over and over and I think the author did that intentionally because it's <sighs> very realistic, you know? I think she wanted to show that how attached Lucy was to Steven. A part of me thinks like the author should have cut it down 70 pages, but then another part of me is like, I don't know. I think I was supposed to be done with it and supposed to be irritated and frustrated. Honestly, I could see myself changing my rating on Goodreads to a 4.5, I'm not kidding, I know. I'm a little confused too. I mean, I honestly, I wanna look more into this author and see how she did her homework for this book because how was she able to write Stephen's POV so well? Like, how does she know how a narcissist and sociopath thinks? It felt so real. So I'm definitely gonna look more into this author and I will definitely, would I would read another book by this author. I liked her writing. It was clear, entertaining, easy to read. It was out on a great pace and some of these quotes were killer. That's the end of this video. So thank you for watching if you did. That's all your girl has to say for now. I'll see you guys next time.